Hounded by online rumours regarding his wife's disappearance from public life, Prince William returned to royal duties today following an unexpected withdrawal from his godfather's memorial service. The sudden cancellation of that appearance on Tuesday led to feverish speculation online regarding the health and well-being of the Princess of Wales. So 66 days since her last public sighting, the whole nation is now asking, where is Kate? And who are we going to call to discuss all the latest lines? Well, of course, it is the one and only host of the To Die For daily podcast, it's Kinsey Schofield. Kinsey, welcome back to the Independent Republic of Mike Graham. I miss Kate so much, his words. Um, I think a lot of people would say they miss Kate so much as well. And uh, even though we knew she wouldn't be seen till after Easter, people are starting to ask a lot of questions. I feel like somewhere out there, Mike, the Princess of Wales is wearing her oh, most comfiest, el oldest sweatpants yeah. while watching the Independent Republic of Mike Graham. Very possibly like she's so. got a maybe she has a cocktail in her hand, <laughs> but I think that she's probably eating up some of these very bizarre, over-the-top, incredibly crazy conspiracy theories, and thinking, you know what? I'm going to sit back and enjoy my break from from the crazy. Yes, I think that's probably true. But in all seriousness, you know, there's still not really an explanation as to what happened the other day when William ducked out of that uh, memorial service that he was supposed to be doing. They issued a statement saying that she was recovering well, hinting that it was nothing to do with her, but it's still unexplained. And I think a lot of people are wondering if there will ever be an explanation. Well, you know, I do think a lot of this has been, has started on X, which to me has become like a dumpster fire when it comes yeah. to um, no accountability. Uh, and I think a lot of people are just trying to stir the pot because you, as you've reiterated multiple times, we don't expect to see her until after Easter. And if we're being serious. I think when you stir the pot on the X, what you're doing is you're increasing the risk of jeopardizing the princess's safety. You know, when they start these stupid campaigns, someone might be inspired to do something asinine on social media, yeah. uh, you know, to try to get clout. You know, what, are, are they going to stalk around their home? I, yeah. I don't know. But I, I feel like it jeopardizes the princess's safety for people to start these hashtag trends and all of this stuff. We did hear from the palace today here in the States, page six received a rare response from Catherine's spokesperson saying Kensington Palace made it clear in January the timelines of the princess's recovery and we'd only be providing significant updates. That guidance stands. However, they did say she is doing well. Yeah. Um, so obviously they're a little irritated by the, the fuss that's being made on social media over Catherine's whereabouts. Yes, it can't be easy, I suppose, for the family. It's a difficult time. You know, we know that um, the king is still getting treatment for his cancer. We know that she's recovering from whatever it is that, that ails her since the abdominal surgery. William is doing the best that he can. It's all a very strange time. There was a terrible, tragic death uh, in the week as well um, of, of one of the, uh, um, the daughter, well, the son-in-law, I should say, of Princess Michael of Kent. Prince Andrew uh, smiling at, uh, at the end of yes. that, looking as if he had got the, you know, the cat that got the cream. You know, the trouble is, no matter what you say about the royal family, Kinsey, people want to know about what they're doing. No, it's true. And they are a, val a very valuable asset. Um, but can I just tell you that I feel like they did open themselves up a little more when it came to their health. Uh, I felt like it was a privilege to have some of the additional details that we got. Some people are blaming those additional details for the expectation of more. Uh. But if I'm being honest with you, I think it's Harry and Meghan that have overshared yes. over the last few years that have made our, uh, our expectations unrealistic when it comes to the amount of information we receive about working royals who yeah. are notoriously mysterious. And that is part of the sparkle. That is part of the reason that we admire them so much and, and, and are so interested in them because they're are typically so many question marks around them and what goes on behind the scenes in real life. Absolutely right. And we got a pretty good insight, didn't we, into Harry uh, when that ruling came out yesterday uh, in his £1 million lawsuit against the Home Office. By the way, I haven't actually used this line yet, but I should have done it yesterday. Knowing what we know about the Home Office, losing every single case that they have against anyone, including a whole bunch of asylum seekers, um, he is the first person uh, to have lost to the Home Office. The Home Office have finally won a case and they've won it against Harry, which is pretty funny. But, you know, here's a guy who showed his true colours when he said 
By the way, uh, I want to know exactly who it was that tried to cut off my security, demanding to know the name of the person so that I don't know what he wanted to do with them, but as if he was like the sort of the feudal king of a country and all serfs had to bow down to him and do exactly as he said. I felt like that was an interesting takeaway, but also to to claim that you are in more jeopardy than Princess Diana, yeah. your mother. I mean, what did you think when you came to like the gun capital of the world? Right. I mean, we're notorious for our gun issues here in America. You literally pursued us. You chose this country. Yeah. Um, so I thought it was interesting for him to say he felt like he was in more jeopardy than his mother was. Uh, first of all, I've never seen the paparazzi surround Harry and Meg. They had to use stock photos of a Harry Potter event in their Netflix documentary. Yeah. And second of all, like you've, you've chosen a, a very peculiar place to live if, yes. you're, if you're concerned about your safety. Well, I pointed out yesterday that the number of people killed in gunshot incidents in America last year was 40,000, yes. you know, and he's claiming that he doesn't feel safe bringing his children to Britain uh, where there are hardly any gunshot incidents at all. And the Sun headlines this morning um, very, um, very much put it all in perspective, saying that for him to say he was not asking for preferential treatment was really laughable because it's all he's ever done. He asked for preferential yeah. treatment everywhere he goes. He wanted preferential treatment from the Queen. He wants preferential treatment from the Home Office and the police. He wants preferential treatment from every uh, event that he, that he attends. He wants to be able to fly on private jets. And he doesn't want anybody like us to be able to talk about him unless he gives us permission. Well, you see it in the name Spare, in his book title. He is in a constant competition with his brother. And in, and I know that his mother did a little bit of that to him. But when, when he grew up, it was important to her that they were always even uh, because she knew that one day William would be king. Um, but, I, you know, I, I think that he's in constant competition, both him and Meghan, with the prince and princess of Wales. And they, they, they were really resentful over the fact that William and Kate got priority. And I think that's part of the reason why they took off. Yes, I think that's absolutely right. And as far as um, the future goes, I mean, a lot of people saying he must come back to the UK at some point this year, very possibly to see his father again. Um, there's not much likelihood of him bringing Meghan and the kids, though, I guess. You know, it is my understanding that he would like to bring them, especially solely due to his father's illness. There yeah. was also rumours of him wanting to celebrate uh, the Invictus Games anniversary there with him and his children. Mm. Um, so, I, you know, it's this is not the end of the world. All he has to do is ask for permission. It is a case-by-case -case basis. So if he gives them an appropriate amount of time to determine whether or not him and his family can fly over, there is a very good chance that they're going to say, yeah, actually, that makes yeah. sense. We'll see you at the airport. Yes. So he, it's almost like he's making a big deal out of nothing. They are control freaks. They don't like to tell people ahead of time what their plans are. They don't like to ask for permission. And that's no. what the ultimate problem is. Well, this is the problem. Uh, it's all about him, isn't it? It's all about them. It's all about attention seeking. They don't like to be out of the limelight, but they don't like to be in it either. So it's the sort of, you know, quandary of the, of the ages, isn't it? It is. But, you know, uh, I, I don't know if you've seen this, this article that's trending here in the States from The Wrap, this industry outlet. Um, but, but they talk about Archwell kind of in chaos, right. their, their production company, their charity company. And when they break down the weaknesses of the company, they say that it's control issues, employee turnover, a lack of experience, yeah. and exhausted people that were mentoring them and counseling them, saying, like, life is too short to deal with you and all of your drama. Yeah. But I think a lot of the, the issues issue is, is control. It's their way or the highway, and they don't have the experience to back up. They don't have the experience or the knowledge to back up what they're insisting yeah. that, that is theirs or, or what they want. Right. And presumably the children, who are always older than I think they are, are going to have to be starting to go to school at some point soon, aren't they? They do go to school, yes. Yeah. And how do they manage that then? Because presumably they should be complaining that everybody's trying to take pictures of them all the time. Apparently not. 
Yeah, I have not seen a picture of Megan and Archie in years. The, mm. But there was one shot of him coming out of school, her holding him coming out of school years ago. Right. Um, but I have not seen one since. No, interesting that they can have a bit of privacy when they want it then, I guess. Kinsey, yeah. good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. Kinsey Schofield there reporting into us from Hollywood, uh, where, by the way, on uh, currently on X, as it's now called, Twitter, there is a trending subject, Harry and Meghan are a joke. Uh, which indeed they are.